speaking, I was trying to poke holes in, in every one of the pieces of your argument. Um, and I'd be happy to do that for you. Good, However, you. Um, I actually want to start with a, with a much bigger um, critique. After saying thank you, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I better sit down. Yeah, you you may want to sit down for this. I did have those that double espresso. Um, so I guess my major critique here is that the claim that you're making um, may be sort of trivial, and that is that you know life chances for low-income people have declined dramatically since the 1970s in this country, despite continued growth of the welfare state, as you suggested. The welfare state has been growing. And so I wonder whether sort of continued, moderate, sporadic growth of the welfare state in the US is really worth all that much if life chances are not improving along with it um, for reasons that have to do with, you know, the shape of the economy more broadly or, you know, global trends or what have you. Yeah, okay, so answer that and then you're gonna, or, uh... Well, or, or I, you I want to stop there. From okay, 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 good, good, <laughs> I'll let other people good. Do okay, so yeah, I th I think this is a real possibility. So my argument really is about the policy itself and not its its effect. So my outcome, of dependent variable, if you will, is not uh, economic security or opportunity for the least advantaged um, or even ri rising incomes for people in the middle on down. So these are the, the key problems that I, that I focus on that, that call for or create the need, I think, for an expansion of, uh, of government programs. Um, and I, I, with some qualification, agree with your characterization of the trend in the last generation. I mean, I don't think it's been unambiguous. There are clear improvements in living standards that we can point to in some respects in which we've become a better, fairer, more just, society in the last generation. But I, I do think it's the case that for a lot of people, life has become less economically secure, that um, it's pretty clear that relative opportunity, that is to say quality of opportunity, uh, between those who grow up in low-income families and those who grow up in the middle or high has, has widened. The gap has widened. Now, absolute opportunity, uh, there's more room for debate. And I, I, I don't feel like we have a very clear answer to that. But relative opportunity, no question. And I do think income growth has been too slow. Now, here again, you know, I want to nuance this somewhat by saying, at almost all points in the income ladder, in the income distribution, absolute incomes are higher now than they were a generation ago. Um, incomes have not been flat, and they haven't declined. They haven't, um, yeah, they haven't worsened. My characterization is that they've grown, but way too slowly, relative to how much the economy's grown, which I think determines how we ought to expect or hope that incomes would grow. So um, so I just want to uh, want to point this out. But I don't disagree with your basic characterization that in some respects life has gotten more problematic and that the the uh, advance, the, I think real advances that we've had um, haven't done enough to make up for this. And I'll just give you one, uh, one additional concrete example. So we now have more people covered by public health insurance than we did in the 1970s, but we have fewer people covered by health insurance because employers have been dropping people slowly and steadily over this uh, period of time. Um, so yeah, the, the question is, even if I'm right about policy, uh, I mean, just to some way restate Julia's question, um, is it going to be enough um, to, to do what I, and I think you know, many of us really hope it should do? And I don't have a good answer to that. Um, I do think it's true that in the last generation it hasn't done enough. It's still been much better than the alternative of no improvement in uh, public social policy. I actually think this is a very relevant question for all rich democracies, so even the best case scenario. So in my mind, Sweden and Denmark are as close to the good society as humans have ever gotten. doesn't mean they're great societies. They have certain issues, you know, Denmark especially with immigration and stuff. But, but they do better than anyone else has in the history of our species. Um, but even in those countries, in some ways, jobs have become less secure in the last couple of decades. And they do a lot to help ameliorate the consequences of this. Jobs have become less secure. Income inequality has widened. So if you happen to care about that, 
And I do, although it's not among the three things that I sort of put front and center in terms of our social problems. Um, and I suspect that given economic and social trends, and there are a lot of reasons for this, it's a very complicated, multifaceted story, um, but given the way they played out, and here too, I think our best guess is an extrapolation from the recent past, I suspect life is going to get even more insecure and families will be even less stable and robust uh, than they have been in the direction in which they've been moving. Community organizations, the, another potential solution that people like Tocqueville and Robert Putnam put a lot of stock in, these will continue to become to fragment, to become less valuable players in addressing the consequences of, of these other changes. And so you know, it's not just here in the United States that will that will face this problem. So now, if you're listening carefully, you, you will realize that I basically punted on Julia's question. Um, <laughs> I really don't have a, I, I don't have, I, I don't have optimism to feed you here. Basically. 